majority of the planning board members here. We're just waiting for Roman Kuchera, but before that, I will go um, and <clears throat> review the planning board rules of procedure. Good evening, everybody. This is um, a combination meeting, both um, planning board public meeting and then later a planning board workshop. Normally on the second Tuesday of the month, we have just the workshop, but because of a rather full agenda and also the desire to accommodate a couple of proposals that we will see in the workshop, we uh, decided to do a combination today that will also possibly lighten the load when we meet again on the 24th, I believe it's the 24th of November. So for the public meeting, um, our rules of procedure are as follows. Um, the presenting um, applicants will first present their proposal and they have up to 10 minutes to do so. They don't need to take that long, but if uh, they do have 10 minutes, uh, we then um, will have the planning board uh, ask questions of the presenter. And then we will have the testimony by members of the audience. Members of the audience get three minutes each, unless it's a city council representative, in which case, since they represent a larger area, we'll get six minutes to present or make comments. The, um, then we will hear from the staff recommendations. And then um, if there's any further follow-up or clarifications, the applicant will have um, a few minutes to um, clarify anything or um, uh, dispute anything that might have been mentioned by uh, the testimony. The th three minutes that you get uh, as public um, applic uh, as public speakers uh, will be timed, and uh, that will be done by a member of our planning staff and. Uh, he will have a clock up and then uh, well, there will be a, a warning signal at two and a half minutes so you know how much you have left. Okay. With that, we will proceed. And the first application that we have is 62 Dana Avenue. This is identified as uh, CUP 0033, and it's a proposal by Michael Roman of C2 Architecture. He's the re uh, representing agent. Um, then the request is a conditional use permit review to convert a two family townhouse into a three family townhouse. Okay, is Mr. Uh, Roman available to speak? I believe uh, Rod Stein is here representing. Yes. Hi, Brad. Yes. Hi. Yes, I'm, I'm here. I'm RJS Real Estate Holdings. Okay. Uh, okay. So we have the we have the actual. Um, applicant here rather than the agent. Okay. So please proceed. So we're looking to put a one bedroom, one bath uh, area in the basement uh, floor plan is here. We're um, uh, at, with a trash area located in the vestibule uh, to make it neat and keep uh, trash off the street. Uh, on the exterior, uh, we've been through um, all the different departments 
and the stairs would go uh, to the side going down underneath the stairway, which is very similar to many on the street. Um, and we uh, worked through um, uh, with the, the building department as well and engineering to make sure the right level of steps and right heights and everything else. We uh, have been before the board a couple of times and there were several criteria set, which uh, I think we've now met from both the code section uh, criteria. And then we had different department reviews, uh, including water, um, which uh, they wanted us to improve the existing service, which would require us to replace the existing sewer line to the curb, improve the water service, which would replace the lead pipes with the copper pipe to the meter. Uh, and then we review, we went through all the other relevant departments and we reviewed the pass, passes on that. We passed the reviews on that. Hit, so. And we're of course agreeing to replace the sewer line and replace the copper with copper, the, the water service. Okay. Which will require digging out the, the sidewalk in the street and putting that uh, in anyway, so. Is that all of your uh, proposal? Uh, yep. Okay. Board members, any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none. Um, no question for me, Al. Okay, who's this? Chris. Oh, hi, Chris. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody? Okay. Nope, no um, I don't do we think, have any speakers, Luis? I, I don't think anyone signed up. Uh, any any of the sure. attendees uh, raise their hand if they'd like to speak? I don't I don't see anyone else. Okay. Uh, Luis, do you okay. want to recommendations from the uh, the staff then? And I would, um, I think that uh, the planning board members all got the memo uh, and with the, all of the conditional use standards that are required to be met. Um, and I, I see that um, according to the staff memo, everything's been met. Is there anything you wanna highlight? Al, I think they've done. Um, I, I think they've done what we asked in terms of uh, providing us all the measurements to ensure it is both uh, the appropriate amount above grade, uh, as well as that the door, uh, the new entry door, will be concealed behind the the stairwell, which is a requirement of a conversion. Um, and they're also planning to again replace the existing utility lines in the building to remove any lead service uh, that exists currently. Uh, and they meet all the other requirements regarding uh, the required amount of floor area. Uh, right. and, it, and as the applicant stated, they also uh, did provide a trash enclosure indoors to ensure that that's not gonna be sitting out in front of the building. Uh, with, with that said, I think our, our recommendation, our staff recommendation, uh, given all the changes that have been made uh, would be to approve. Is uh, replacing lead service, is that uh, a standard uh, uh, requirement now uh, for any renovations in the city? Or does it have a... Uh... Um, I, there are programs available to help uh, to help owners do that. So it's something that the city is encouraging. I don't know that it's a requirement yet, but okay. um, certainly any, any opportunity, we, we make an effort to do that. Okay. Um, Brad, the staff recommendation is approving with a condition, but uh, did you? Uh, it seems like you indicated that the condition will be met, um, or um, is it the staff recommendation still to approve with the condition on the record? Uh, I think it's clear from the record that the intent is to replace the utility line, so I don't believe it's needed as a condition of approval, but the board is welcome to do so if it chooses. Well, I, I, this has to be obviously before anything uh, occurs, the uh, necessary departments, including the water department, um, 
has to approve um, the digging and the, and uh, dealing with all of the replacement of the sidewalk and they they've already the street. Approved, they've already approved all of that as well already. We've applied okay. and they've approved it. Uh, okay. Right. All righty. Then I would ask for um, a motion to um, approve the project as presented. So moved. I have a motion. Yes, from Martin. Second. Moved. Moved by Martin Hall and seconded by Glenisa Gayard. Further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, Aye. Okay, the pool is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, the second uh, item we have on the public meeting agenda is the proposal at 255 to 271 Clinton Avenue. And the proposal here is by home leasing. Uh, and it is basically to um, construct a parking lot with 38 spaces. And tonight uh, we are asked to um, be the lead agency on the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Uh, <clears throat> but um, of course we want to hear what the proposal is. So the re representing agency agent today is Hirschberg and Hirschberg. Al, I don't see uh, Hirschberg on here and um, apologize I, since we're filling in for Zach, but I, I believe Zach may have had the conversation that because it was just a uh, lead agency declaration that a presentation necessarily wouldn't be necessary, um, but okay. they will be on the, the agenda for the the 24th, and we could certainly come back in the workshop and orient the board members to any questions uh, they might okay. have. Okay. Well, I would like, uh, since you put it up there, I think it's good to, to take a look at the plan, um, which you can see there. And this work, this um, particular location uh, provides parking for uh, the residents of the rental units that home leasing is doing. Is that correct? Yeah, so this is um, home leasing, as you know, has been doing a number of uh, improvements to properties along Clinton Avenue, uh, and, and parking is an issue that's come up uh, in a number of those cases, um, and something that we had sort of alluded to that uh, would address that to some degree that we had been working with them on is this proposed lot here uh, with some vacant property they own in addition to areas uh, behind existing properties that they've renovated. Um, it is a little bit unorthodox due to the tax credits. They are leaving a number of the um, parcel boundaries between the properties. So the lot will flow through those parcel boundaries, but there will be a, uh, an easement written into the deeds for ingress and egress to those properties. Uh, there's also a case before the Board of Zoning Appeals for an area variance to exceed the uh, maximum allowable parking on the property at 255. Clinton Avenue, and that's again due to the need for the property boundaries to remain. Um, you know, technically, some of that parking on 255 is accommodating uses in those other buildings, uh, and it will not technically be on the lots uh, that those uses are on, uh, although it will be directly adjacent to. Um, so the, the Board of Zoning Appeals is an involved agency in this case, uh, as would be the Historic Resources Commission for uh, any improvements along the property frontage on Clinton Avenue. As you can see, they are providing a, uh, uh, I believe it's a decorative fence uh, and, and landscaping as well as a small uh, open space area with, uh, with some benches and trees and other amenities uh, for residents of the area. So that- One of the things, uh, oh, I'll go, go on, I'm sorry. I was just gonna just underscore the, um, what the, the planning board would be considering uh, would be a, a development plan review for the, uh, for the parking lot. Okay. So hey, now the, I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. No, go ahead. 
the uh, the parking so the parking spaces aren't uh, reserved for the people living in those particular buildings, right? These would be available to people from other buildings in the neighborhood. I I believe I believe so. Uh, we could have the applicant speak to that at the okay. general meeting, but that's my understanding. Okay. Vanessa. Yep. So these are so it's it's I'm trying to read it. It's hard to read on this on my screen. So I'm trying to figure out where 255 is in relation. Do you know the cross streets? Because I can't really. I see large. There's no. Yeah. There's no so, cross street really. It's in the. It's in. No, uh, the two where the. Uh, yeah, to where the so, like. The uh, streets where the buildings are. What's on so, either side? So I can just. I'm just trying to. I, I believe Arbor Hill Development is in the building directly to the right of the parking lot entrance. Got it. I know exactly where you are now. That's all I needed. Yeah. Okay. okay. So so this is all going to be behind the building? Um, so behind so the building, no. I should say? It, it will be behind uh, 255 Clinton all the way down to 271 Clinton, but then there will also be an area uh, to the east of 255 Clinton that will be uh, more of a uh, an open parking lot with screening along the front. Okay. Now, do they always, if I remember correctly, they already have a curb cut there, right? Yes. I believe so, yeah. So they're just expanding yeah, they upon that area. Yeah, currently it's 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 uh, only partially improved. Uh, you know, there is some pavement there, but it's not fully staked out or delineated and it, you know, drainage okay. would be installed and, and things uh, pursuant to our- Ah, thank you. So then this goes back to the original issue we had with home leasing and parking closer to um, Swan Street. And the, the, thought, uh, the thought was that they were allowed parking for those who were closer to Swan Street to be able to use this lot. Is that still in the works? Uh, yeah, I mean, we'd have to clarify with, with home leasing at the meeting, but my understanding is that their tenants for these properties or for other properties that they own will have access. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to uh, sort of assign them or if it's just going to be open. Um, I assume there'll be some sort of, you know, access that restricts it to residents of home leasing properties, but. Um, well, that was something that they allude and not alluded. That was something that they sort of, not sort of, that was something that they promised when they were thinking about this lot to add different spaces. So if we can follow up on that and confirm, that would be great. Yep. So yeah, tonight we're really just, just starting the process to, uh, declare the lead and then we'll we'll get those questions answered. Thank you. It looks like yeah. it's already one of the uh, things that I would want. No, it looks like it's already an informal parking lot, isn't it? To a large extent. Yeah, it's Always. been used as uh, construction staging as well. Uh, okay. Just sort of cleared it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's, as you look further down the block, there's sort of an alley there's an alley that sort of runs between behind in some of these streets but there is a grade difference too so yeah. uh, it's never oh, fully, yeah, yeah. fully passed through but there's always been some access through there interesting you can see uh, on the property lines there that there's a really narrow strip that goes down to the south east interesting okay thanks yeah, the, the one question i would want to find out about too is how and we can again ask this at the regular um, the meeting later on, or you can find out in, in advance of the meeting. And that is, how do they plan on keeping non-residents from parking on the lot? People who don't live in their units. Is there going to be a gate, uh, like with a, with a maybe an electronic card that is only relevant to the people who are part of the home leasing um, community because not yeah. all the properties on Clinton Avenue are, are being redeveloped by home leasing. There are a number of other uh, both home-owned and uh, landlord-owned properties on Clinton that have, you know, relatively close access to this lot. So I think that would be one thing I would want to find out. Okay. Yeah, there were a number of, uh, you know, just to get the mechanics of this to work with the various lots and things was was challenging. So I apologize not having that information ready for you, but we'll uh, we'll follow up and get that for you. Okay. 
Um, are there any um, people from the public who are willing to speak on this issue? No, nobody signed up. I don't see anyone, no. Okay. Then our recommended action for this is to declare the planning board as the lead agency under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Do I hear a motion to do so? So moved. Yep, and moved seconded. by Roman and Roman Kuchera and seconded by um, Martin Hall. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, passes unanimously. The um, other agencies, the, plan, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals, the Historic Resources Commission, the Division of Housing and Community Renewal, because they're a major funder here, and the Historic Preservation Office, because of its, again, uh, location uh, in a historic district uh, will all be notified that the planning board has been uh, voted as the lead agency. This ends the public meeting um, and I would ask if there's any other items or issues uh, for the public meeting. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the public meeting. A move to adjourn the public meeting. The move Second. to adjourn by Chris Ellis and seconded by Roman Kuchera. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the meeting is adjourned. We will now move into um, our regular workshop for today. And we have a couple of items on the agenda for the workshop. The first, uh, and let me uh, explain to the public who are listening in, um, the planning board workshop is for the planning board to review new proposals or previous proposals that have um, uh, been presented but maybe have changed or uh, are going through the process. And uh, the discussion is between the planning board and the planning staff the public is welcome to listen in, but there is no um, testimony uh, that will be done at the regular planning board meetings. The planning board may ask a, an applicant um, if the applicant is available uh, to either clarify uh, something or they may have a specific question that they may want to ask in reference to the project. Um, so the, that's up to the planning board or staff to, uh, while we're reviewing these items in the workshop. So the first item on the agenda is um, 67 Ontario Street. And it's a proposal um, in a mixed use neighborhood edge district for conditional use. To occupy um, a property as a laundromat. Okay. Who's up on this? And can we see? Can you hear me? We got a blue screen in front of us. Uh, Luis, you're going to take this one. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Might want to turn it up a smidge, but. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yep. Okay. Uh, so this is 67 Ontario uh, laundromat proposed. Uh, the laundromat features eight washers and six dryers. Um, it's located at the corner of Ontario and Second Street. To the mix. Luis. Yes. Luis, can you um, get um, a little bit closer to your microphone? Um, I'm having a little problem hearing. But so is Glenisa, and since I have hearing aids, the much younger planning board member can't hear as well. <laughs> so I think you need to be closer. Is that better? 
Yes. Okay. Glenisa, how is that with you? Okay. okay. Uh, so Thanks. Yep. Go on. The laundromat is located on the corner of Ontario and 2nd Street. This is an exterior view of the structure as it is currently. Uh, this is the floor plan. Um, there are eight washers and six dryers. Uh, you can see the layout of the laundromat here. Uh, so the closest laundromats uh, are Capital Cleaners and Laundromat, which is about three tenths of a mile away on 610 Clinton Avenue. Supreme Wash Laundromat, uh, which is about half a mile away on 476 Central Avenue. And Albany Laundry Center, uh, about half a mile away on 121 Quail Street. Um, the nearest conditional uses are the Philip Schuyler Achievement Academy. Uh, which is at 676 Clinton Avenue, PJ's Pizza on 27 Ontario Street, and uh, Sashava, Sashaya and Company, Indoor Recreation and Entertainment, which is at 103 um, Ontario Street. Uh, Off-street parking is not needed. Um, it's the property does not um, exceed the, par the required parking or the um, doesn't meet the requirements to provide parking which is one per 400 uh, square feet. So the application materials were sent to the Division of Traffic Engineering um, on November 3rd. The Grace, I think, I think this is a different case, right? Is it? Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> So conditional use for a personal or business service use proposed on the ground level of was it 67 Ontario Street. Yes. Okay. So sure. other, than, other than this slide, do you have anything else on it? And the slide that showed the plan itself? No, I do not have any other slides for this uh, case. There, there, you know, the, the application was, um, I want to say limited, but it's also a pretty straightforward request. Although certainly if the board members have questions, we can, uh, follow up and obtain any additional documentation as needed. Well, I do have one, one question. Um, I went out there and looked at it, uh, because when I went on, on to search Albany, um, it was a little bit out of date because the property that was shown um, was uh, apparently an abandoned house. And it looks like either that house itself is this one and was renovated or it was torn down and this new one was built. But I'm wondering, um, was, was this property built and the laundromat started and without a permit um, or was it always planned to be this way and uh, I guess the other question I have is whether there and it looks like there is uh, a residence above I don't believe there um, is is any um, improvements inside the ground level that would indicate that anything's been built out from a a use perspective, although it certainly does look like the building was recently rehabilitated and we could certainly get the permit information for that and add that to the record. Uh, and I would, I would, I would suspect that there is an apartment upstairs. I don't know that for sure. Um, any questions from the board on this? I guess I'm, I have one. Go on. I'm just Anybody? curious. I'm just curious, Brad. Um, I, I think it said there the uh, closest laundromats were 0.3 and 0.4 miles. What what uh, for a laundromat? What's your what's the uh, lo locational adjustments? Whatever, where it doesn't have an impact. You know what I mean? How far would you want to walk to go to a laundromat, Roman? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the rule of thumb the, for a bus the, stop is uh, the least uh, the least far you would uh, 
you'd have to, I would imagine. So, uh, well, maybe so, Martin, maybe Martin, you have a, an idea of uh, a quarter mile is generally uh, what's considered a typical walking distance for someone. Um, you okay. Know, who, uh, you know. Yeah, okay. I was. That's. I'm glad you asked that question. I had the sure. same one because I guess one of the things I was concerned about is whether this would be viable with three other laundromats very close by. Um, but I guess uh, what I'm hearing is that because people don't want to go schlepping, you know, more than a quarter of a mile with a lot of laundry, you know, hauling it away, that um, a quarter of a mile is, is appropriate. Therefore, all of these other laundromats seem to be farther away from that. Yeah, and I think it's real. Al, I would add that, um, you know, uh, certainly the area in the city where we have uh, a handful or, or more vacant storefronts that we're always looking right. for active uses for. So uh, in this case, you know, I would advise being more accommodating than us. Yeah, yeah, it was good to see a new building there, that's for sure. Okay, any other questions before we move on in the workshop to the next item? Nope, I think it's good. Okay. Is everyone hearing me okay? Yes. 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 Okay, the next item on the agenda is 1057 and 1061 Washington Avenue. This is a proposal uh, for a zoning map amendment known as 0008. And this is an amendment to the zoning map to change the zoning on the previous uh, proposal by Stewart's, uh, those uh, to change the two properties west of the existing old Key Bank building to R2, which is two family from the mixed use neighborhood center. So I suspect the board is um, uh, uniquely familiar with these two properties, given uh, the recent cases and meetings uh, that the board has had related to the to the former or the uh, proposed uh, stewards uh, that was rejected uh, for a conditional use permit. Um, Luis, if you could go down a, an extra slide, I think there should be a map that's depicts. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so Colvin Avenue is a, uh, a generally zoned mixed use neighborhood center, um, and a lot of the bill, a lot of the properties going further down Colvin Avenue um, towards Lincoln Avenue on the uh, the west side of the street uh, go a bit deeper than the property on the corner, uh, which is where the um, a former bank building was uh, most recently a, a um, headquarters for a political campaign. And then there are uh, two houses that I believe due to the, um, the boundary uh, line of the other properties um, were included within that mixed use neighborhood center zone. Um, that said, it is uh, perhaps somewhat unorthodox for these properties or properties of this uh, style to be uh, zoned commercial when their historical use is residential. Um, you know, I believe that uh, you know, Councilman O'Brien has stated that um, that he feels this was was an error that was made during the drafting process, and it very well could be the case. Um, you know, it, it's it's there there are properties that, in in my opinion, could be could be zoned either way. Um, but you know, the board having seen recent proposals, um, uh, you know, obviously that may be a, a factor in their considerations as to whether or not to uh, favorably recommend this. Uh, uh, rezoning request. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll let um, the councilman at the, at the upcoming meeting speak to it in more, in more detail than that, but I believe that's essentially the proposal that's on the table. One thing I noticed, uh, and you could enlighten the board on this perhaps, but in the mixed use neighborhood edge, there is only one permitted use of all the uses and that is a specialty retail all the rest of the uses are either conditional as we know and that was only a couple or they are accessory or temporary 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, accessory uses are uh, uh, zoning BZA would have to deal with that. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Now, are you looking at as, as an alternate to um, the proposed R2 zoning and MUNA no, no, zoning? No, no, I'm just looking at if, if the existing zoning remains rather than having it altered uh, back to residential, if it remains MUNC, from what I can see from the zoning ordinance, the USDO, um, for an MUNC district, the only permitted use is specialty retail. All the other uses are conditional, and there's only three of them that are conditional uses. And all of the rest of the potential uses in an MUNC district are accessory or temporary. Al, I don't have the code in front of me, but I don't believe that's accurate. Well, I have the code in front of me, and that's what I'm looking at under the table. So the accessory uses are things like accessory dwelling units, alternative energy con uh, cabaret, a composting of household waste, daycare, delivery services, et cetera, et cetera. And they're all, they're all accessory uses to the MUNC. So the and I guess the reason I bring that up is that if we leave it the way it is, it looks like everything except one item, specialty retail, would have to go before a public agency. And I'm wondering if that public agency being accessory uses would be the zoning board. Well, um, you know, I believe uh, uh, restaurants, offices, uh, personal business service uses, uh, multifamily dwellings, among others, would all be permitted uses in the MUNC uh, zone district. Uh, like I said, I don't have the complete list in front of me. But I, it's my belief that those are not accessory uses. Those would be permitted uses in the, under the current zoning uh, for either of those properties. The, the R2 zoning uh, would limit the properties to uh, essentially the single or two-family dwelling and a limited uh, perhaps a couple of other uses, but perhaps not even uh, a community residential facility, perhaps. Uh, if we were to look at MUNC, Thank yeah, okay. That I'm sorry. That's true. I, I noticed. I think you were reading M U N E, Al. That could have been. No, I was using, I was looking at M U N C, but I was looking at one page. Um, um, I mean, two pages rather than the one before that that has, has also uh, a number of permitted uses and conditional use, uses. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would also add, I, I think that the, the uh, viability of a, you know, with a couple exceptions, a commercial use in those two existing dwellings um, would be relatively unlikely. Um, so it would be more likely the case that that property would be uh, redeveloped as a whole for some uh, higher and better use if it were to remain zoned MUNC. I, I don't I find it less likely that that uh, commercial use would move into those existing properties, but. Okay. Are there questions uh, from the board? You know, just out of curiosity, what's the zoning map? If you zoom zone out, zoom out a little bit, is it um, as it is right now? It kind of follows the commercial properties going up Colvin Ave near the rear of those properties is that what you said that's why those two were two lots were included initially yeah. yes um i i would you know i would say an easier way of looking at it is if the desire is for the existing dwellings and uses to remain uh and potentially the building on the corner to be reutilized in some fashion it would probably make sense to amend the zoning to uh to r2 or something else if there's a desire to see a larger type of redevelopment on that corner that encompasses all of those properties, uh, the MUNC would be the more appropriate district because I don't, uh, I find that less likely to happen with the smaller uh, parcel footprint that would be left 
uh, with with the two properties being taken out of the MUNC zoning. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think you're 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 right that uh, that uh, this would be more in keeping with the idea of ter of, of evolving Colvin towards a uh, you know a neighborhood shopping street as opposed to a you know more regional shopping street or higher intensity commercial use. Which seems to me to be the I, I should point out that seems to me to be the intent of of, uh, of the zoning there to begin with. Other questions on this? No. Okay. Uh, if there aren't any, then we will hear more about that at the public hearing uh, on the 24th. Um, Al, the, uh, we do have a couple of hands raised. I don't know if you wanted to entertain any. Uh, one of them is the applicant. I don't know if you had any questions for the applicant that you wanted to entertain at this point. I, I don't. Um, I would defer to the meeting. Okay. Just checking. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we should wait uh, and have that at the public meeting. We have two other items on the agenda, and I would uh, ask if we would want to save 76 Second Avenue towards the at the end of the meeting and go on to 425 North Pearl. Does that make sense? That's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. We imagine 76 might take a little bit longer, and we can get get more <clears throat> time for that. Is that okay with the board? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, let's look. Let's look at 425 North Pearl then. Okay. So this is a, uh, well, not a, a case, but a property that's, that's coming back to the board. Uh, there was a, a previous proposal from a group called Dakota Partners to um, do a um, historic tax credit project that uh, involved uh, converting the building to residential as well as um, it's a there's multiple buildings and or additions on the site. Uh, if we could skip to the next slide, it may show a overview. Uh, okay, here's head on uh, the view from Broadway. Um, the, the property does carry, carry through to Pearl Street. Um, and the property has a handful of addresses that have been used historically. Uh, the, the, the prior proposal, just for reference, involves taking down the one-story addition to the left of the photo here and constructing a five-story uh, new construction in its place. Uh, that faced some resistance from the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, which inevitably put the project um, sort of in a limbo phase, at which point I believe the um, the property owner uh, entered into an agreement with a new party, uh, which is Redburn Development. Uh, and they're proposing, I believe, uh, 82 residential units uh, in the two larger structures at the site. Uh, they would retain the uh, single story building for uh, a use to be named later. Uh, could be a warehouse or a retail or something of that nature. Uh, I believe it's a 13,200 square foot space altogether. So the board would be looking principally at the conversion of the uh, former uh, larger industrial buildings to residential use, uh, as well as the improvements to the accompanying parking areas. Um, you know, in looking at the proposal, uh, I don't have a, a breakdown. I didn't see a breakdown of the, of the exact nature and type of units, but they are uh, similar to a lot of other proposals uh, that we've been seeing on a, on a smaller uh, size, uh, one bedroom apartments uh, that are in high demand. Uh, and then, you know, minor to moderate improvements on the exterior areas of the building. Um, they are gonna need to uh, put forward uh, a minimum of 10% of the uh, site area equivalent as active or passive recreation space for the tenants. Um, there were a couple provisions on the site plan, but I didn't see the full calculation on that. So that's something I do intend to follow up with the applicants on. 
there's also uh, the affordable housing um, requirement of 5% that would apply here. Um, so they will need to file the plan for that. Uh, and then I, I think we should certainly look at some, uh, some improvements to the uh, exterior areas uh, of the parking lot. Uh, currently there's a, a chain link fence and gate with barbed wire. Um, you know, I think something more suitable to a revised residential appearance would be, you know, uh, our, our code does set forward uh, some uh, suggested treatments for uh, street fronting parking lots. Um, certainly on the Broadway side, uh, you know, I think those improvements are going to be appropriate. Uh, you know, I, I guess I leave it to the board for discussion as to how to treat the larger parking area on the corner of Pleasant and North Pearl Street. Um, and I, I haven't really um, uh, discussed with the applicants uh, in detail beyond the notations on the plan that appears that they're showing to keep the existing fencing in place. Um, and our code would certainly uh, discourage that. Um, I think it's, it's a little bit uh, in a gray area as to whether on a redevelopment project it definitively requires that to be replaced or not. So that's something that we can discuss going forward. If, I had, if the board has any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Are they proposing parking besides what they have on that side lot at Pleasant Street? Well, there's all three lots that you see on the uh, on this, the site plan there, or aerial photo, are in their possession or a part of the property. So it's there's 54 spaces total, which, um, I, in fact, I thought I saw, I'm seeing 54 here. I, I thought it was 62, but somewhere in that, in that range. Currently it's not staked out or delineated. Um, and there's certainly, um, you know, there certainly can be discussion of how the, the configuration is, is working with respect to egress. Um, you know, I, I did note that, that it may be uh, helpful to have some connection between the two, uh, the two lots towards the, the top of the photograph there. Um, right now, there is sort of an opening between uh, the, air, the, the lot that's on Broadway and the lot on the corner of North Pearl and Pleasant. Uh, I'm not sure why they're showing that being discontinued, um, but that's a conversation that I would have with them as well. Is the building, uh, can you go back <laughs> to the other one real quick? The site plan. Did you want to see the aerial existing conditions? Well, I was just was wondering, um, what are they planning on doing with that one story brick building? That's at the corner of Pleasant and Broadway. Um, that is the lost and found uh, restaurant tavern. Uh, it's a separate property. So that, ah, okay. The property boundary wraps around that. Unusually lost shaped property and, and building. <laughs> lost and lost found. Lost yes. and found, huh? Okay. <laughs> They have a very nice outdoor uh, seating area, Al. You might want to check it out sometime. Yeah, it's a great place. Okay. So I, I, overall, I mean, it, we, we think this is a good project. We've had a couple uh, misses, as we discussed lately, in the warehouse district on, on, on residential conversion projects. And we had all kind of known from the start there are a handful of buildings that really are, are more suitable to something like this than a, um, than, you know, a, a modern sort of industrial user. So uh, it's, it's a project we're, we're excited about. What was the justification for, um, what was the justification for uh, rejecting the uh, demolition or the demolition of the uh, single story warehouse uh, from a historic perspective? Was, isn't it a relatively new building? I guess not, 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 not that it matters, but uh, just, just curious. Well, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I have any uh, official uh, okay. ascertainment of, of what that might have been. Um, I do know that the state office is required to refer uh, tax credit applications to the National Park Service, who can be pretty um, particular 
And I believe more so when it's for the listing of an individual property uh, rather than a, than a district. So I think it may have been treated differently if this whole area had been a National Register Historic District, but they were applying to make this one property in and of itself historic. I, see. I think okay. in order to do that, yeah. the, the Park Service felt that the integrity of the entire property should be maintained mm -hmm. throughout okay. all eras of construction. Right. I don't necessarily agree, but you know, <laughs> that's not my area, so. Right, right. You wanna move on to the other slides to show um, in the aerial view, I think that would be very helpful. Brad, is the aerial view part of the presentation or did you want me to pull up MGO? I, I could have sworn I saw it uh, pop up there, but. I saw, a, I saw not only the site plan, but a, a, a plan for the. Uh, hmm. Is it a layer on one of, one of the slides? Um, I, I could try and uh, pull it up in, in Map Geo if, if you'd like to share my screen. I can pull it up. Okay. Hey. Appreciate it. Oh, there we go. So you can see in, in faint green the outline of the, the rather, um, you know, unorthodox okay. conglomerate of properties here. Um, So this, what street is the street on the lower left-hand side where North, uh, it's North coming in, in? That is Pearl, yeah, so I thought, okay. So yeah, I, I, I would expect uh, the applicants and their presentation to speak more to the ingress and egress to both the building and the parking area and how the, the sort of flow and how they're thinking the buildings are going to work together in tandem. Okay. Ah, there we go. So it's the, um, the white structures as well as the, the red structures. Well, dark red structures. Where are the dark red structures that you're Pointing to. Um, oh, the, oh, there. Okay. Okay. Is that the, the the bar on the corner? Is that the former bank building? Correct. Okay. Yeah, now I know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, yeah, and the, I believe the board recently reviewed uh, just... Uh, up the block towards going towards downtown on the opposite side, a um, conversion by Matt alone associates uh, an old piano factory uh, structure. So. Mm -hmm. Is there any other um, items that are uh, slides that the board would want to see on this one? I think we had a, um, a plan of the apartment uh, Built, uh, the apartments on at least a representative floor. Oh. So that's the first floor, I guess. I had a bit of trouble orienting myself, to be honest, uh, the, the floor plans uh, with the, the site plan and the buildings. Um, so I can ask the applicant to better sort of project those. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a second floor and then. Uh, 
I, I don't know where we are here, so can't be much help. So. Yeah, I think the big white space is the single story building, right? And uh, yeah. these two are the yeah. two, <clears throat> the two brick buildings. Yeah. Yeah, because this is so your, I think, third floor, and the other ones were your first yeah. and second. Yeah. It looked like they were planning something in the one story building down below, didn't, weren't they? I, I might have been misreading it. Yeah, there um, we go. Well, if you, if you, if yeah, you I, go back to, to the other Broadway. slide. Warehouse. Yeah. I think it was just left open. Yeah, that, now that's the part of the building that the uh, State Historic Preservation Office is requiring them to keep, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. well, yes. The, yes, or at least the, the, the prior applicant, I, I do not believe, well, I do not know if uh, they're, they're uh, looking for tax credits on this. I, I, they quite possibly may be, but I don't know definitively. They're pretty decent sized one bedrooms, from what I could tell. Somewhere between 900 and 1,000 square feet. And then there's smaller ones there's a mix. in other parts of the building. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that certainly has been the market. Uh, I do see a representative of the applicant on the call. If, if you do have any questions, we could certainly invite them to come in. Any questions to the applicant at this point? If not, okay, we'll see more of that when we uh, get to the planning board meeting on the 24th. Okay, the final one is 76. Second Avenue, the 76 project. Uh, so, so 76 uh, Second Avenue um, is currently, we're, we're currently working with um, the applicant now, I believe is working directly with the city departments to obtain the requisite uh, sign offs uh, to move the project forward. Uh, I believe uh, most, if not all, of the planning considerations have been addressed, and I, I think Zach uh, had had told me that that you guys, that the board, walked through the various uh, uh, waiver requests um, that that were being sought by the applicant in the prior meeting. Yes. Yeah, and there, we there were two uh, letters from the applicant that addressed a lot of the issues that were raised. And I urged the planning board members to make sure that they read them and became familiar with them. And that, of course, led to either administrative um, uh, waivers by the planning director, or the planning commissioner, um, or waivers requested of the planning board. So I believe the, um, you know, the, the, the path forward that um, was discussed is uh, to entertain uh, an additional presentation from the applicant uh, this month, uh, at which the board could consider acting on the waiver requests, which would allow them to finalize their site plan uh, for sometime in December, as well as uh, working to incorporate the department comments. Uh, there was also an inquiry with respect to whether um, the board might consider a, a demolition approval at one of the upcoming meetings. Um, as you know, the board's typical protocol is to do those in tandem with the uh, development approvals. So I guess I would defer to the applicant to make their, um, their case as to why you know, the board should deviate from that if, uh, if that's what they're requesting. So to be clear, the applicant is requesting that the board act on demolition before the board acts on the entire project? I, I believe that was, Amy, you might be more familiar with that or maybe I could let the applicant speak to that. They are on the call. I would let them speak to that. 
Amy, what did you say? I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure that I know more than Brad does. So. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've been, uh, I've been out of the office a bit and I've been trying to keep up with, uh, with, with emails and I thought I recalled seeing that, that request. I mean, you know, I don't think any of the buildings in question are uh, of particular significance. However, um, you know, obviously there would be a question of what sort of interim uh, site treatment would be proposed, um, you know, if the buildings were to be taken down as well as, um, you know, what, whether, what, the, what the need or justification would be to do that in the, in the, uh, in, in the immediate term. I think my, what might concern me in reference to that is whether, uh, I mean, normally we do not give um, demolition approval uh, unless there's um, site plan approval or major development plan approval. Um, we do it all in one package. And uh, I'm also wondering, you know, again, this is a complicated project that might be developed in stages. And if part of the funding doesn't come through and properties have been demolished, uh, I think there's still a concern, at least on my part, as to what happens, what mitigating factors, uh, remediation factors, I should say, would occur if we're faced with a situation where only part of the project is built within, you know, within, um, appropriate time period. Hey, Alice. So. I just have a little bit of a differing opinion on that. Um, being that I grew up in the South End and very familiar with the area, a lot of the houses that um, are owned by the 76 project and they're looking to demolish, many of them don't have current residents are in, and are extremely dilapidated. So I, I'm not sure if I, I think there's only like one or two and maybe the applicant can can give us more information on which ones are actually occupied and which ones aren't in their condition. However, um, whether the 76 is there or not, the livable conditions of those properties, in my opinion, is questionable because of their dilapidated state. So I, I'm not sure that it would be I, it, I think it's we're looking at whether or not they come down now or come down later, whether it's by the 76 hand or on their own. You know what I mean? We may just be delaying the inevitable. Mm -hmm. so, hey, Brad, this is Ed Larkin. Uh, so um, I no. guess what, uh, thanks for the clarification, uh, Glenessa, that's very helpful. Uh, I'm, I think you're implying that it may be better to simply uh, if the project doesn't move 100% forward as proposed, that um, it's better anyway to have them down than to have them sit there and have just vacant land. Exactly, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, and I, I do believe the board was considering a, uh, a, a meeting on December 8th to accommodate Eighth, yeah. the project. Um, and you know, the board may choose to open that to other uh, applications should they be in a position for, for action. I, I, you know, I think we need to continue to work with our departments to see that we can close out those, uh, those approvals. But, you know, certainly the board, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's something the board wants to, to vote on or we should just keep that open. Zach wanted me to put that out there for consideration. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that in our last meeting, um, the board um, agreed that we would set aside December 8th uh, okay. to consider the entire project. Um, by that time, it was felt, at least uh, reported by Zach, um, and by the developers uh, through the letters that they sent answering the issues, uh, that all of the um, parts of the project could be considered at that meeting. You know, the, the demolition, uh, the uh, issues concerning the two houses that are still um, not being willing to uh, be torn down and folks not willing to leave, uh, the uh, major development plan re uh, review uh, as well, and the actual, you know, final 
design has been proposed and with the changes that they're proposing under the waivers. So that seemed to be the agreement that we had uh, okay. to move forward. Okay. Um, are, are there any of the waiver requests that the board had any reservations about so that we could go ahead and prepare, prepare those resolutions for the upcoming meeting? Needed to have further discussion on, or, or is the board clear on what they're requesting and the nature of the request? I would again um, ask the board to review those letters if you can't remember everything, because I know it's, you know it's again a complicated project. But I looked at all of them myself and um, it, and discussed it with Zach, and it seems like almost all of them are very minor. Mm -hmm. uh, except a couple that uh, the um, applicants uh, agreed to change so it, a, a waiver wasn't needed. Right. And I, I think but but I, would, I would think that maybe the board can review the letters and uh, get back to the planning staff if there's any uh, issues or if, uh, they, they don't understand or have concerns about concerning the waivers so we could you know openly air them at the next pro at the next board meeting and if the um if the board would like i can also provide a overview of the criteria for considering waivers is there uh the same as the board of zoning appeals i guess my only my only comment was that uh, not so much you know the request for the waivers but the sheer number is that atypical no i mean i think it's a a uh it's a larger a fairly large project um and you know there's certainly some unique elements about both the site and the project development that um may need that particular accommodation i mean i don't think anything from our staff perspective jumped out as being anything that would be uh, detrimental to you know the surroundings as a result of you know those waivers i think some of them were very technically oriented uh, uh you know just you know setbacks where you know a corner of a particular parking area or garage was in proximity or was within 50 feet of something that would have required a setback uh, you know but i think as you know the waiver provision has been called out and we go through some of these applications with more of a fine tooth comb um, you know, we just want to be careful that we're, um, you know, catching any required deviations and making sure that we're uh, going through the appropriate process for those. Um, you know, we did have a very lengthy dialogue with uh, Common Council and some members uh, who had proposed the ordinance who were seeking to remove the waiver provision altogether. So I think we're being uh, just extra sort of scrupulous and um, vetting the application. So I don't, I don't believe it's an unorthodox number for a project this size, no. Okay. Any other questions about uh, 76? Yeah, Al, I, I did wanna ask, um, obviously there'd be a presentation coming up on the 24th and potentially the 8th. Is there anything in particular that the, uh, the board members would like to see the, the project applicants uh, focused upon? I think it'd be interesting to uh, talk about the TDM plan, uh, you know, and the, and the traffic uh, plan for uh, for the project. Uh, Kelsey Carr, representing the applicant, does have a hand raised. Uh, do we want to <laughs> let the, her comment, sure. or do we have any questions for her? I would again uh, like to keep with our procedures. And uh, anything that uh, the applicants, I mean, unless we have very specific questions that um, we're fuzzy about, I would just as soon um, allow them to speak at the planning board meeting and not during the workshop. I think that if the board has any questions in the interim, as I suggested that we review the letters again, we can um, direct those questions to the planning staff so that it's, they're, everybody's prepared at the 
the, the meeting of the 24th and the 8th. So any, any other questions to the staff regarding the 76? Okay. Um, I would entertain, uh, well, I would ask first, is there any other, uh, any other thing, uh, any other topics that need to come before the board? Brad, Luis? I believe those were, those were all the items that I had on the agenda. All right. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. So moved. Uh, second. Moved by Glenisa Gayard and seconded by Chris Ellis. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, enjoy your dinner, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye. In a couple of weeks. <laughs>